Corsair, EVGA, and Seasonic. These are power supply brands that when you purchase them for your system, it gives you that peace of mind that the computer you proudly built yourself won't blow up to pieces. But does it always have to be these big brands? This is the Inplay GS450 Pro. It's not a very well known brand but it's 80 plus bronze certified. We're gonna be talking about if this power supply is safe to use, should you overspend on your power supply, and what are the things that you could do to spend little on your power supply without blowing up your system. Grab your power supplies and let's get into it. If you guys are aware, the famous don't skimp on your power supply is one of the top pieces of advice that knowledgeable builders tell beginners. I do understand the concept since your power supply is basically the heart of your system. And I've personally had an experience with a power supply blowing up due to me trying to spend the least amount of money. But that was totally on me for still buying and using this power supply even though the red flags were as obvious as a girl giving you hints that you don't have any chance of getting with her. And so being fully aware that that experience was only caused by me being an idiot, I do think that the don't skimp on your power supply has been exaggerated to the point that beginners are overspending on power supplies that they don't even need. Now I did fall into this cliche because of the fear of my hard earned money going to waste if ever the power supply dies. And so when I first built my own PC, I bought a Seasonic Focus GM650 which is a semi-modular 80 plus gold certified power supply and that costed me nearly $100. But now that I know my options, it turns out that the Silverstone ST50F for only $33 would have been just fine for my system. Well, given that I don't mind ketchup and mustard cables and having to put in more effort into cable management. Which I don't. With that said, I went ahead and got this Inplay GS450 Pro for $29 to see if I could have gotten away with a PSU this cheap when I first built my computer. Now people are too fast when it comes to judging products like these, and I do understand why. For me however, I personally want to try it out first before actually criticizing it. I used the GS450 Pro on my main rig for work and gaming within 7 days and I had no issues whatsoever. It consists of a Ryzen 5 2600, 1660 Super, 2x8GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz, which if you put them all on PC part picker, they have an estimate of 309 watts. Also since recent hardware started to be more and more power efficient and the goal with this power supply is to see how far it can go, I also tested this on older hardware as well. In this case, the i5-4440 and RX580 partnered with an Asus H81MD motherboard, 2x4GB of DDR3 clocked at 1600MHz and two hard drives. It has an estimated wattage of 413 watts on PC part picker but these power supply calculators aren't really that accurate so Having a power supply with a wattage that's really close to the estimate isn't really ideal. It's always better to have a bit of a headroom if you want that peace of mind. I also did some tests but not that this is a legit way of testing a power supply but I ran some benchmarks to see if the GS450 Pro will behave differently when the system is under load. I fired up Cinebench, Time Spy, and a couple of games like Horizon Zero Dawn, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It didn't act weird or anything but again, I'm not sure if this is by any means a good way of testing a power supply. I just wanted to share it with you guys. But nonetheless, I didn't have any issues with this power supply using it both on my main rig and my brother's 7 year old PC. Now let's hit this off with a couple of questions that came into my mind while I was testing this power supply. So first off, is it safe to use the GS450 Pro? In my case, yes, but take note that the test I did was only for 7 days. Only time can really tell whether this power supply will hold up or meet its demise after a couple of months. Secondly, should you overspend on your power supply? Well, that really depends on what you're going to be doing with your system. Are you going to be using two graphics cards to take advantage of SLI for Nvidia or Crossfire for AMD? Are you going to be overclocking? And is cable management really a priority for you? If you said yes to all of those, then most probably you're going to be needing a more than just a budget power supply. And finally, what are the things you could do to make you spend little on your power supply without having a ticking time bomb on your system? First one on the list is sacrificing aesthetics. And what I mean by that is going non-modular and sometimes going the ketchup and mustard route. Second is having a rough idea on how much wattage your system is going to be using. 
To do this, you can simply go to PC Part Picker and input all your parts there. It'll give you an estimate wattage on how much your system will need. But again, always allow a little bit of a headroom when actually purchasing your power supply. For me personally, I give a headroom of up to 100 watts. So if I get an estimate of 450 watts, I go ahead and get myself a 550 watt power supply. But if the price is almost the same with a 600 watt, then of course go with the 600. And the last two things that I want to leave you with is make sure it's 80 plus certified and don't trust true rated. It doesn't mean anything, it's garbage. 80 plus is the only certification that's known for power supplies. True rated is really just a term used for marketing purposes that sketchy sellers use to be able to sell their products. Now with all of those being said, should you buy the Inplay GS450 Pro? Well, after you've done your research and you've determined that 450 watts is enough for your system, the things to consider next are the questions that I ask when it comes to overspending on your power supply. Are you going to be doing SLI or crossfire? Are you going to be overclocking? And is aesthetics or extra convenient when it comes to cable management is a thing for you? And if you said no to all of those, then yes. Go ahead and get this power supply. I wouldn't recommend this with an RTX 2060 and above though. How about you? What do you think of the don't skimp on your power supply? Although it is true in most cases, do you agree that most people have been exaggerating it to the point that, well, it doesn't really help at all? Let me know in the comments below. That wraps up this video. I hope it was able to help you guys. If it did, feel free to drop a like, get subscribed for more content like this, and I'll see you guys on the next one.